Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Libra. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Libra, I'm doing your reading with three decks blended into one. So you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got the, um, the three of wands on the split, which is coming from another reading the other day. I can't remember which reading it was. And the Nine of Cups at the bottom of the deck, which is bringing in that reading with the Pocket Realm. I can't remember which ones. I mean, it could even have been the same reading. I can't remember, but... Um, okay. Basically, it's talking about the perfect moment. You know, like a surfer standing on the beach waiting for that wave. And look, with the Queen of Cups right here, there's that wave approaching, right? It's like, this is the perfect timing. And then the Queen of Swords here is the, referring to that Leo reading with the sunglasses yesterday, or was it yesterday, two days ago? Um, the perfect moment is arriving for you. It's like that wave is arriving. It's like this expansion point for you, which is talking about with the Nine of Cups, kind of moving into a phase where, um, I, you could call it wish fulfillment, but it's not quite that because I feel like you're this active participant in, in the harmony that is happening or the, the manifestation that is blossoming in your life right now. And it could be partly to do with this waiting for, it's that, what's that phrase about, um, opportunity and preparation meeting it's something like that it's like this is the perfect time this is the perfect opportunity and you are prepared so when that wave moves through your life it's like you take it you take that opportunity um you recognize it for what it is okay overall energy from the lifruma healing oracle for libra Anchored, mortar, anchored. Okay, this card is profound. I've never seen it before. But it's talking about marine creatures dis deposited over eons as immovable memories. Okay, so that's really profound for me because it's talking about that... Um, that kind of, that fish symbol that to me, the fish or the anything aquatic is kind of like alien. Okay. So it's talking about this card. How does it apply to the reading? It's the overall energy, but this card is talking about kind of, well, I guess you can simplify it and say something like reactivating like ancestral memories or reactivating like um, cellular memory. It's like a reactivation of a deeply embedded, like ancient memory. Does that make sense? And that's why, um, but the marine creatures, immovable memories, yet always present. That's the thing. So I guess you could just see it as like a, a reactivation of something that hasn't been touched for a long time. That when it surfaces, it could feel really kind of alien and foreign to you, but it's actually quite... Um, deeply who you are, something like that. Okay, so that's fascinating. How does it apply to here? Well, it could be what's happening here, actually, in the first row of the reading, because I'm seeing you almost being like a dancer, in a sense. It's almost as if your life is, or you're so, your life is moving you, or you're going with the flow of life so efficiently, so effectively, that it's like this, this dance, and that could be what this is talking about. It's like this memory of flow state, you know, and then thinking about the, cre the, the water creatures and how they move so elegantly through the water. Okay, so let's just get started. We're starting with the Eight of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles. And this was talking about, I mean, maybe this is that preparation meets opportunity thing because it's like you've done all of this work. All of this incredible work is actually what I, it's like I'm being corrected. I'm wanting to say in all of this incredible work 
You've done incredible work. And because of that, you're now in this six of pentacles. So it's, it's like, it's not that necessarily that you're receiving the rewards for that. It's actually looking more like you've done all of this work over time, over time, which is interesting because it's kind of almost getting into this like ancient history and fossils and things like that. So it's kind of like reinvesting, reinvesting and gathering and collecting. It's like saving, saving, saving. You've worked so much over time and gathered up so much over time. It may not be actual literal financial wealth. But you've gathered whatever. You've gathered um, all of these, maybe these embedded memories, which is now looking like this kind of archaeological dig. I mean, it is this kind of almost like this sandy environment, right? She's painting it. But with all this idea of these ancient marine life. Anyway, which is fascinating because the Queen of Cups is here. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. So it was just looking to me like you've done a lot of hard work and you've kind of saved up or you've built up your own life kind of single-handedly, completely on your own. You, you're self-made in a sense, right? Because you're coming into the nine of materials here, the nine of pentacles. And it's like that. It's like it's finally reached this tipping point where you're going from maybe from like paycheck to paycheck or, you know, just getting by or just like having to mostly work, like most of your day is spent working and uh, whatever whatever word you want to put on that and now it's tipping into this point here where it's becoming uh there's more leisure there's more free time and i feel like i was talking about that in a reading the other day too right so i mean the nine of pentacles talks about that like um independence wealth sovereignty being self-made and that's what that's what this is talking about too right it's like this is all you you've done all of this work and so even though the surfboard is here and we're talking about the wave it's almost like the universe the universal energy meeting you where you are, but it's like you're at that perfect place to meet it because you've done all of this incredible work over time. Okay, so this is this is you kind of gathering and being prepared in a sense. It's this really joyous energy actually in this nine of pentacles, which spills into this. Well, okay, it looks like this. So the the nine of pentacles, the four of cups. And the Ten of Cups is this beautiful kind of, it's not quite symmetrical, but it almost is. It's got that swoosh here, right? I guess this kind of counterbalances it. But I guess this is where it's kind of looking to me like a dance or like I'm hearing music. I mean, there's this kind of musical uh, staff here. Um, and then with the Four of Cups in the center here, it was, you know, giving me the idea of there's the, I, I don't know what it's called, the counter on a piano that tick, 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 ticks the time, but also talking about kind of coming into um, cali being calibrated and precise oh, and also like a radio station where you turn the dial until it comes right into perfect alignment so that you can catch that signal. So it's like, Maybe it's because a lot of this work is done and you're going into this more leisurely or uplifted or joyous state. But if that, but because you've created a life that allows for that, right? Or you've created this space that allows for that because you've done all of this incredible work. All of this is a result of all of the work that you've done. And perhaps that you were only kind of envisioning this aspect of it, which is, you know, gathering wealth or gathering wisdom or gathering experience and maybe didn't realize that you were gonna have the opportunity for this. As it's tipping into this, it's almost like it's a surprise. It's this, in a sense, this overabundance this, that, you're, that you're moving into, which is, like I said, maybe giving you the ability to like take a vacation and really just chill out, right? So in this kind of chilled out space, it's happening all simultaneously. It's moving from this is one phase or one energetic state, which is applied, it's working, it's, it's active. And this is a much more passive, free flowing, being moved by the universe state, right? This is where the wave of the universe kind of picks you up because you've tuned into it or because you're prepared, because you're standing there ready and waiting. So when the wave comes in, it's like you're dialed in, right? You catch that signal. So... It's interesting because I wanted to, I'm, I'm feeling into whether this is a collective thing and it wants to say that specifically you, whoever it is that I'm dressing here, um, because you are right on that line where you're tuning into the signal, it's almost like you're hearing something that others aren't, or you're being moved by something that others aren't, but you have this ability to share it with others just by 
um, allowing it to, to, by embodying it, by embracing it, by being that dancer, by being the one who expresses that flow state in whatever way that happens for you, could just be through conversation, could be through physical movement, it could be through whatever creativity, could just be through like inspired action of whatever kind. It's kind of spilling into other people's lives too, right? It's like this 10 of cups here is you bringing joy to others. It's kind of that sharing the wealth situation which is really beautiful because here it's like you're you're independent this is all of yours but what you're choosing to do is bring it to others um and then with the eight of pentacles at the end of the line here at the end of this first row there's something here about this gorgeous kind of dynamic or like give and take reciprocity it's not really reciprocity because it feels like it's all you kind of dancing around all this space right but it almost seems to be centered around either the things that you love or the people you love or the or just the activities that you love with this being the ten of cups in the center all this pentacles energy surrounding it is like an investment perhaps in the things that you love right bringing all of that wealth that you've gathered and kind of putting it all into this Ten of Cups space could be partly what's facilitating it. But the interesting thing is, it seems to be this, is it symbiotic is the right word? It's like whatever you put in, it's like it's feeding it back out again. I mean, but you're in this too, right? So you're in all of these spaces. But specifically, I'm looking at this card here and its relationship to this Ten of Cups. It's almost like by taking time off or being with loved ones or just having leisurely relaxing moments it's actually kind of feeding your work it's like your work is allowing you to have this time off so it's a kind of like feeding that leisure moment but then the leisure moment is then feeding your work and it's almost like this juggling right it's very active there's a lot of motion there's a lot of like symmetry maybe that's kind of it's it's being shared and flowed back and forth and this seems to be this that that's the flow state that you've reached because up until now it's been something other than that this feels much more grounded and this is just this becomes this other thing this other way of being where it's this flow right the incredible thing is is like okay so you're here kind of doing this musical thing um, which, you know, the musical thing could just be talking about the way that you work with the energy. It's coming through visually in the cards as like dance or music or motion, wave, but it could, you know, express through you and what it's just, it's an energetic thing, right? So anyway, two voices coming up next is talking about suddenly kind of catching wind of it's like I'm here I'm like you're listening to something which is interesting because it's almost what's happening here as well too right as this wave meets you as the universe meets you it's like you're dialed in and you catch the signal but this is something else I want to say this is a this is a what it's showing me is that it's coming from another individual so this is almost like you tuned into the universal frequency something like that but when this two of swords and it has nothing to do with two of swords it has to do with the the imagery on the card it's like you know you're you're standing on the beach for example um and suddenly and that's why i'm getting it from this card i'm like where why am i placing you on the beach there's been beach coming up a lot so um standing on the beach you know, kind of doing your thing and suddenly like, wait a minute, there's another signal here, right? And then this Ace of Cups, Queen of Cups coming up next, which is this other signal coming in, which is really interesting because Queen of Cups here was talking about the wave coming in. This wave that you've been waiting for is coming in, not in the form of the Queen of Cups though. That's just, we're just looking at visually that wave approaching. It hasn't doesn't have anything necessarily to do with the Queen of Cups, but what it could have to do with is this kind of sea creature, aquatic life, ancient alien memory, <laughs> DNA activation, whatever you want to call it, right? Does, I was gonna say, does this, does this look like some kind of like DNA thing? I don't know, DNA sequencing. DNA is more like a spiral, spiral right? But Sorry, I'm just getting pulled into that symbol. I'm not gonna follow it. Okay, so the Ace of Cups, Queen of Cups is like somebody kind of approaching up the beach and it's like you're picking up their signal before they, it's like while they're still way in the distance. It's like you can hear them coming, right? You can hear their vibration approaching you. And when they reach you, it's like they're this, this magnificent creature, this magnificent sea creature. 
I want to say that they seem to be kind of coming in response to your, you might not realize it, but it's almost as if you're emitting, you're emitting a signal as well. And it's like they heard you from up the beach. And so here they come. The fascinating thing is though, well, first of all, it's like, They are presenting a little bit differently than you because, well, they are all this aquatic kind of watery energy as well. But with these new two cards coming up next with the Ten of Wands and the Six of Wands, uh, it almost feels like there's maybe some ego there because it's like they're strutting their stuff, right? It's like, look at what I can do. I can carry this incredibly heavy thing or do this thing that is like... Um, you know, a real feat of, of human wonder kind of thing, right? Like this is something not a lot of people can accomplish or display easily. They do things with ease. They have grace, right? Incredible grace. But the way that they display it, it's like they're saying, look at me, look at how successful I am. Look at what I can do. Is it true though that they are kind of ego egocentric or ego-based or coming from ego? Or is it just that they are such an enormous embodiment that it comes across that way perhaps perhaps okay so it could just be like your initial reaction to them if somebody approaches you just like really extravagant really eccentric you know their appearance could be really kind of out there right it's like it's like bowie-esque so they're an unusual creature right because they're embodying this kind of sea creature reactivation energy and they could they could very likely move very differently than most other people they're eccentric so that's the thing they're coming through as eccentric and unique and so that could be read as showing off but maybe that's not their that maybe that's not really what's happening maybe they're just a a, a, a powerful embodiment and that's unusual to see right? So that could be what it is. But the interesting thing is here at the end of the reading, you've got King of Swords and a second King of Swords. Um, and so I want to say this is the two of you. And it's interesting how I'm talking here about this being this almost potentially egoic expression. I'm just feeling into that because it's like, is it possible? I guess it is possible. I mean, we, of course, we see a lot of really extravagant characters, you know, and in, in celebrities and such that are generally incredibly egoic, right? Especially when they're really big, colorful expressions like that. Is that true here, though? So it's almost like you're wanting, it's like your mind is wanting to categorize it. Where does this one fit into the scene? Trying to fit them into a category, right? But is it true? I can't quite penetrate it and tell. I want to lean towards no. It's not ego. It's not um, just attention seeking. I don't feel like that's what it is. I feel like they do receive a lot of attention because they're colorful. But um, but there's something here. There's something here about that. About how it kind of catches you by surprise to come, to have this one come towards you. First of all, they seem to be approaching you. They seem to be approaching you with this really big hand, interestingly. So that's that's interesting that I would describe it that way, right? It's like they, they have this poker hand. Is that the right? Like a game of cards. They have a really good hand. Or is that all your kind of attempting to intellectualize or understand what this is, right? Because there's this, this feeling like, oh, this is fascinating, that when you first perceive them, that it almost, it's like your mind is blank. It doesn't know what to do with it, right? It's like there's no, you don't know how to categorize this. So this is something that you've never perceived before. But what's interesting is I want to say that, but maybe you have, because it could be this ancient energy. And maybe it's even almost like an ancient friend that if you were to pass them by on the street a week ago before you were in this, kind of aligned flow state, you might not have recognized them, but they might not have been in that flow state either. It's like you you only activate this, this ancient memory when you're both in that 
embodiment, for example. Um, so maybe because it's such a, a new experience, because you're just kind of phase changing from this pentacles realm to this more energetic wave state, um, that it's like your mind, your, your mind, your actual thinking mind doesn't know what to do with this or how to categorize it. Which is interesting because it's like it's like you want to assign all of these symbols. You see this King of Swords here has all of these things. It's almost as if this one comes in. They're not, you can't read them because they don't, none of your symbols or none of your descriptors apply. This is a new category in a sense, right? So it's this very interesting dynamic between you. It's as if you are struggling to figure out whether you actually like them. But it's also, I think it's because it's two King of Swords coming together here at the end. It came up with this message of a worthy opponent. And maybe that's coming from you as well. Perhaps I find it very strange to think that, that you could be in this, this flowing um, leisure state and then see somebody that walks into your space. It's almost like you're having a campfire on the beach with your friends in this beautiful state, enjoying all of your luxury and abundance that you've created by working so hard. And this stranger kind of enters the scene and walks right into the circle, right? It's all, And it's almost as if I'm seeing them like walking around that campfire. Like they're really bold. They have a really bold presentation. And so I want to say it's kind of getting your back up, right? Because you're saying like, who is this one kind of entering my space uninvited? And who is this one to be so extravagant, right? It's like they're not holding back anything. So it's got this vibe of a worthy opponent. The two king of swords coming together. There's also something too about them in a sense having an advantage because you are like, you don't know what to do. It's like, you're just like this, like blank slate, right? And they are almost, um, because they're the one approaching you, they've had time to either conceptualize or to plan or to, um, to see this coming. And so they're, it's almost like they're more well equipped for this exchange, something like that, right? So, I mean, you're the one caught off guard. So you're in this space of, I'm not sure what to do with this. I'm not exactly sure what is happening here. Is this friend or foe? But it's coming through very kind of powerfully or most dominantly as a worthy opponent. So that's interesting. I want to say that they're bringing you a challenge that could um, sharpen you in a sense, right? Especially with all the swords energy. But it just seems like a strange, a strange, it doesn't really match all of this. It's like, why is this coming into like all of this kind of soft wave type energy and it's bringing in this kind of sharpness. I mean, even here when they're in the watery space they're they've got this sharpness about them, right? It's like, it's interesting. It's almost like I can't really feel their energy. And I don't know if that's because I'm, looking or feeling through your perspective, but it's like, you can't quite get a gauge on who they are. But I want to say that they're, they're here for a reason. They're here to push you to a new level in some sort, right? So it's like, if you're in this, this kind of leisure state, I mean, maybe they're actually going to activate this kind of ancient awareness somehow if it already, if it hasn't already. It's interesting because, because the wave has brought them in, right? Because you're riding this universal wave because you've been waiting on your surfboard. They are in a sense riding that same wave. It's like that, that wave or the next wave, however you want to look at it, has actually kind of washed them up on your, on your beach. And it's the reason why they're now kind of trampling all over your afternoon with your friends. See what I mean? It's the same energy. It's the same energy that has, is moving you is also moving them. Do you see what I mean? Okay. So I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended and see what else could possibly come out about this. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description. I just want to say, first of all, I, I don't feel like there's any threat here. I just feel like it's going to be um, an unusual encounter that may really kind of get you thinking in a new way, or at least have kind of push you to think in a, in a different way in order to negotiate this situation. See what I mean? Okay. 
Uh, link to the extenders in the description. I'll see you next time, Libra. Thanks, bye.